so tonight, you know, um, we'll see where Holy Spirit takes us. I have some thoughts that I want to share. And um, I also feel that uh, the, the title of tonight was it's time to engage that we might just, you know, the second half of this meeting, maybe just get into some engaging in the spirit and um, we'll see how Holy Spirit leads. So, as I said, it's about engaging and, um, you know, engaging it, uh, the word itself, you know, just gives us that, that image, that picture of intentionality. It takes intentionality to engage, you know, we can't be complacent. So God is saying, you know, to, to um, get intentional, get intentional about everything, get intentional about him, get intentional about our walk, about our life, about our destiny, get intentional and engage Engage means to lock on to something. So we're going to go further into that. But, you know, we are being separated. I believe the whole body of Christ, the armies of God are being separated right now from everything that opposes God's mind, God's heart and God's will. He is coming in in a very disciplined way, in a very strong way to and that is actually helping us to make that move into full consecration because we've been sort of lukewarm, the body of Christ, not sort of, a lot maybe. And um, God is coming in with some discipline to saying, hey, get it, get it together. You know, the times have changed. I need you to be in, in a place of full consecration. So we are being consumed by him. We're being consecrated onto him. And then we can become that place for him where he steps forward through us into our arena, into our spheres, wherever we go. You know, he, he shows up on the consecrated vessel, through the consecrated vessel. That's where he will show up. And that's who we want to be, right? We want him to show up. We want it like the song says, manifest yourself. Dear God, manifest. Well, he's looking for some places where to manifest, some consecrated vessels where he can step into our world, into our arena and, and do some things. So for this to happen, he must have a people that's fully submitted to his lordship, his will that are fully yielded to him, fully surrendered. It's a new breed arising now because the body and, you know, we're recognizing that nothing in this world matters anymore. Nothing, nothing at all that we have to now begin to live for eternity, to begin to live for what is eternal. Even our lives don't matter. You know, so many people, it's so sad, you know, for the ones who are left, but so many are dying. You know, I, I, I just saw right a, a young man, I don't know, I think he's in his 30s, a friend, a son of a, my good friend who was just on Facebook. He died, leaving his wife and a few kids. A young, young guy, worship leader. And I, I just can imagine, I know his mother well. And then another, you know, a minister in, in Michigan, you know, that I've met down at Barbara Yoda's church, you know, his wife young woman, beautiful, 40, with four children, just died. So, you know, we have to recognize, you know, that this life is just fleeting and that we have to just lay it down, lay it down, lay it down on the altar and give it to him because uh, it, all that matters is what is eternal. And um, he's looking for that. He's looking for fully surrender. Thank God that we can praise God that these these ones that have passed on, they're in glory. They're in glory, seeing the face of God. So that's what we live for, right? To see his face, to sit at his feet in eternity. So we give him everything. So as the disciples and their generation were chosen and blessed to see the Messiah and to be the witnesses of the unfolding of great prophetic events, so are we, 
we are chosen and honored to be participants in the work to open up the gates to the King of glory and to be witnesses of his coming and of his return. How exciting. We belong to that generation chosen to participate in God's supernatural work for the closing of this era to prepare the way for the King of Kings to open up those gates. We are gate openers. <laughs> We open the gates that he might come in, that the king of glory might come in. And, you know, I, um, I saw this scripture, you know, I know this scripture and I saw it recently and it just impacted me in such a new way. And it's just been uh, on my mind a lot. And I, I wrote it down and, um, and then a friend of mine, actually it was Martha, I don't know if she's here. She um she's part of this prayer group and she sent me um a description of what they were doing and and she had this verse in there and I'm like oh my gosh there's that verse again. So it's Acts I'm going to read it in two translation Acts 20 verse 24. And this is Paul and we know how Paul was sold out. Paul was sold out for eternity. And you know we want to be like Paul. Maybe not to live like he did you know, to go through what he did, but his heart, you know, and he said, oh, there's Martha. So I was just talking about this scripture, Martha, God had given it to me. And then you had sent it in that um, email you sent me the same scripture. So it's just wow. impacted me a lot. And it says, but none of these things move me. That's who we want to be. None of these things move me. Nothing in this world moves me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Like what a heart, you know, and, and, and as God peels away all the things that are separating us from him, you know, as he peels them away, we are becoming like this, we are becoming where the, nothing matters. Nothing matters in this world other than Jesus. Nothing, like Paul says, but none of these things move me. So let's read that in the Passion Translation. He said, but whether I live or die, it's not important. Whether I live or die, it is not important. For I don't esteem my life as indispensable. It's more important for me to fulfill my destiny and to finish the ministry my Lord Jesus has assigned to me, which is to faithfully preach the wonderful news of God's grace. Wow. So, you know, in, in the first translation, he says, nothing moves me. He doesn't count his life as anything. And the second one, he says, his life, whether to live or die, is just not important. All that is, matters is Jesus. All that matters is obeying him, loving him, letting him move through us, having his heart to reach the lost, those who are dying, those who don't. Thank God the ones that I spoke of just now, they, they knew him and they're with him. But there's so many that don't know him. And uh, we, we want to reach them. So many are dying today. Like the, the death rate, mortality rate is like, 20 to 30 percent over what it normally is so people are dying we want to get them we want to get at them so god is god wants to get them so that is why he is preparing his army and moving us out and getting us ready to have this kind of heart like paul where we can say nothing moves me but jesus so he has chosen us and he has brought us to himself for this great purpose. And that purpose is to be a supernatural instrument in our time. We wanna be instrumental in our time. We wanna be the, the, the vessels that God needs for this hour that he can use. We are the stewards, we are it. We are the stewards of these times and events. We create and facilitate the atmosphere for his coming. We're the, the door openers for him. 
We create the atmosphere where he can show up. It's, it's through us, through our lives of consecration that opens doors for him to show up. So we want to give him everything. We want to bow the knee. We want to be obedient to whatever it is he needs from us and to do in us and surrender it, give it to him. So, you know, we create, as I said, we create and facilitate the atmosphere. Facilitate, that word means to make something easier and more likely to happen. So you're the one that's going to make it easy for Jesus to show up and more likely to happen. When you enter the room, Jesus enters the room. That is, that's the, the walk we want to have in these days. To help to bring something about. That's what it means. We are the conduits of his presence. And we are the facilitators of his glory. We usher in the presence and guard and host it. Ensuring that nothing will grieve or rob from him. So for those chosen to be born and to live in the fullness of times, which I believe that we are living in, the fullness of times, the day of his power, where we're entering the day of his power, the call to ministry is the high call of facilitating and stewarding the life of Christ to the world with increased levels of authority and, and power. So we are working with him to gather everything into him. He is coming for what belongs to him. He's coming for what belongs to him. The harvest belongs to him. This world belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's. I believe 2024 is such an important year. And I've been saying that for like four, five, six months, you know, 2024 and you know, Psalms 24, and, you know, everyone's is talking about Psalms 24. And um, the king of glory, open up the gates, the king of glory is coming in. But 2024 is the year of the door. And it, and it goes along with Psalms 24 that we open up the doors, we open up the gates. So in the Hebrew calendar, this is the year of the door. So on our journey with the Lord, we are continually passing through doors because we're on a journey. And the cycle of feasts, the three feasts of the year, well, there's seven. But, you know, there's three in, around the Passover and there's Pentecost and there's three around, you know, um, trumpets, atonement and tabernacles. But these feasts map, map out our journey with God. And we're constantly on this journey, moving through these feasts, you know, and, and we come back around again and pass through um, these feasts. And they're, they're, they're meant to keep us going on the journey. So the Passover is significant of, of passing through, going through doors. And, so, and this Passover happens to be in the year of the door. And I believe the entire body of Christ, those who are consecrated and ready, are going to be passing through into some things. So on our journey with the Lord, we are continually passing through doors. And Passover represents a door, a time of crossing over and breaking through. It is not a coincidence that Israel celebrated the two most significant Passovers at a, a time of crossing over. They were crossing over out of Egypt and into the, into the plans and purposes of God. So they, they crossed out of Egypt at Passover. And again, at Gilgal, the, they crossed over into the promised land. And that was their first Passover where, where Jesus said, where God, not Jesus, um, Joshua told them to sit down and to... And for the men to be consecrated, to be um, circumcised. So, and then they celebrated Passover. So upon the entrance, so they had passed over and upon entrance into the promise and they had, they celebrated the Passover feast. So these are two very, very, uh, the two biggest um, Passover celebrations. The night that they, um, the night that they, they passed, um, passed out of Egypt, what a night, into the, their destiny with Almighty God, a God that they, that they barely knew. 
that they were going to get to know Yahweh God. And I believe we are now crossing, o crossing over out of the carnality of the world. The carnality of the world. Like Egypt, we're crossing over out of the carnality of the world and into life as consecrated Nazarites in the promised land of Christ. Wow. So the armies of God are passing over and through the door this year. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord Jesus? We're coming. We're coming through. We are passing through spiritual doors this year. And we're being made ready to fully launch out at Pentecost. Where we will be empowered and anointed for our assignments. So this is exciting. I found. Oops. This is so exciting. I, I've, um, you know, I really feel that um, it is so. There's such an anointing. There's such a weight on this year. And as 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 we coming up, as we're coming up into Passover, that uh, we're all going to be going through this door, and uh, there is a preparation. You know that we are we're we're passing through and that we're coming up into Pentecost and I feel at Pentecost we are going to be launched out we are going to be empowered we're going to be anointed and we're going to take our place so Pentecost one second Pentecost represents empowerment. So get ready to be catapulted out. So what does out mean? I was thinking about that because I felt God saying, get ready to be catapulted out. So are you ready? Hallelujah. So what does out mean? It means your assignment. It means, it means your assigned sphere. You're going to be catapulted out into your assignment, into your assigned sphere. It means changes in your, maybe, maybe changes in your location. It may mean new divine connections. It may mean onto a prepared platform. Or it may mean a new level of spiritual positioning with greater authority. Or it may mean all of these things. But we are being launched out. So get ready to be launched out to go. So it's time to engage now, as I said, with intentionality. Get ready for war. Prepare yourselves for war, as there's always war at the gates. There's always war at the gates. There's always war at the door because the enemy does not want you to pass through that door. You know, that door could be a picture of like a birth, you know, like the dragon is at the door, is at the gate, at the, at the, at the woman's womb, ready to devour the child. It does not want that child to be born. So get ready to you know, in your mind to recognize that, you know, there may be some opposition. And if you are prepared for that, you can make a stand, you know, in your spirit that uh, nothing can take you out because you're, you are forewarned, you're discerning and you're alert to the enemy's devices. So you can say, yes, I know what you're doing there. I see you and that's not going to work. I am pressing through you are not going to rob me. You are not going to, you're not going to steal from me my, my destiny. You have to have that, that kind of intentionality and, and forcefulness that you're saying you're not going to do this. And with God, you are able. With God, you're able to stand. With God, you're able to just step on the necks of those demonic kings and walk over and pass through. So yeah, so get ready for war. Get ready for the war at the gates. And as I've been saying, you know, over and over, kings go to war in spring. Well, guess what? I was, I was preparing this today. I just felt that God would say spring has sprung. <laughs> spring has sprung. It seems that we're getting, 
an early spring this year. So spring actually is on March 19th. But as of tomorrow, the temperature just keeps rising and rising. So spring has sprung. And, you know, armies are mobilizing, you know, and, you know, there's great warfare in the spiritual realms right now. So be prepared, be on your guard, be wise, be smart, be discerning. Because God has an amazing, you know, plan for your life up ahead. So we need to, as I keep saying, fast, pray in tongues, take communion, listen for his voice, listen at his gates, you know, and um, just be on guard. You're going to be fine. You're going to launch out. You're going to take your stand. You're going to be secured in your place. So engage means to participate or to become involved in and to launch out. It also means that we bring weapons together in readiness to fight, to enter into conflict or combat with an enemy. So that is where we're at. We're ready to war at the gates for our breakthrough because we have a new dispense, disposition of spirit right now because God has done this marvelous work in us that we can stand. We're not going to cower in fear. We're not going to be beaten down. We are going to stand and we're going to fight our way through and we're going to press through in the power of God. So um, I just feel that um, this is really a, a very significant time that we really need to be alert because the enemy is ready to wage war. March 19th, spring begins. And as I said, you know, the, it talks about the the... the Kings going to war in the spring, and but I believe we have an early spring. So this is all March, and we're at, March is just at the end of this week, next week. So no, this week. Then we have March twenty fourth, which is Purim, where we fast and pray. So they fasted and prayed to annihilate the enemy, the Amalekites and Haman. And were successful and were victorious. So fasting and praying in this season is so significant. And God is telling me to fast and pray. And that is what I'm doing. And I can feel his presence on it, the mantle to fast. And uh, so I know it's important. And it, it gives you strength too. It gives you um, discernment and it keeps you alert. So that's March 24th, that's Purim. April 8th, I want to talk about April 8th, is the Great American Eclipse. And uh, this eclipse is, um, there, it's, past, it's going over America, that's why it's called the Great American Eclipse. There was one in 2017 that went from north, west, to southeast across diagonally right across America. But this one is coming up from Mexico through Texas. It's going diagonally across America. And what's interesting about this eclipse, because I, I've I've been I've noted the different eclipses that have happened recently. There was one last year. And um you know, I take note and listen and hear what people are saying, but I've never really gotten, you know, just engaged over it. But this one I feel is significant. And um, this one is passing through uh, over America, through the states, over seven Ninevehs, cities of Nineveh. Seven. So this is significant. And then in so through America, and then it's passing through an eighth Nineveh in Canada, in Nova Scotia, where it's leaving. It's going up right through America, right up to Nova Scotia and out. So that is significant because God has shown me so many things in America that just get linked into Canada on the East Coast in some significant way. So, you know, I did a, a very anointed conference that went up from the I-95 and the I-95 went right into New Brunswick for eight miles to this town of Woodstock where we had that. So that was significant again, that that stretch went from of, of the American I-95 went into Canada. 
So here again, we have this, um, this eclipse going across all of America and crossing into Canada, into Nova Scotia, passing through eight Nineveh's. So that's April 8th. I'm going to come back to that. So April 22nd is the Passover. So not long after that eclipse, we are go we're coming through the Passover, which will take us into further in the year to June 11th, which is Pentecost. So I believe all of these dates are so significant this year. So be on the alert for all of them, be in prayer, be seeking God. Um, let me see. There was an excellent article by, uh, what's his name, Rob Snyder, who is, he, he's, he's prophetic, and he has good articles and insights sometimes. Michael Snyder, sorry. And uh, let me put it in the chat. And it's to do with this. Um, it's to do with this eclipse. It, lots of interesting insight in it. So, um, Nineveh. So there's two aspects of Nineveh, you know, there was the aspect where, you know, they were in, in grave sin. God was going to bring great judgment on them, told Jonah to go talk to them, preach. And uh, Jonah didn't want to go because he didn't think they deserved <laughs> to be saved. And finally, you know the story. Anyway, so Jonah goes and um, they repent. They repent. And, uh, and God relents. Now, they eventually, they, they fell back into their old ways, and judgment did come on Nineveh. So there's this, there's a twofold aspect of repentance and judgment. So I'm not sure what the significance of this Nineveh is, of this eclipse. You know, maybe God is saying to us, it's a warning, repent. Judgment is on the way, and you can stop this by praying and interceding. Maybe that's what he's saying. Maybe he said that already, and maybe this time the Nineveh is, is the judgment is coming. I'm hoping and praying that this is a time of he's offering us the opportunity to pray and repent. So let's read Jonah 3, 2, where it says, he's saying to, to Jonah, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So maybe in this hour, God is telling you something to go somewhere and to preach. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. So this is after he relented and said, okay, and he was going to be obedient. So he did go. Um, and Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, yet 40 days, 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So I, I don't have all the, I just was getting this download this afternoon. And so I don't have insight or prophetic insight on what God is saying. So you can all take these scriptures and be in prayer and everything I've just shared. God will be downloading to us and giving us insight, you know, maybe on Monday morning, Rhonda, we can, we'll have more insight and we can uh, pray into these things. So yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast. Is that what I'm saying? Fast. They proclaimed a fast and they put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least. So the king's response in, in um, chapter 3, verse 8, further on in verse 8, I'm going to read that. This is what the king says. He said, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. The king got a revelation. The king got a revelation. I'm just feeling this in the spirit. Are we getting a revelation? The king got a revelation, something, disaster, impending disaster was on its way. And they cried out mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. 
Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works that they had turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. Hallelujah. So I think we need to just get really serious with God in these times and just be really intentional about our intercession. And it's not so much that we have to intercede against people, but for people. Even, even the, the Muslim community, that they would be saved. God has brought millions of them to our shores, to North America. And he is saving millions of them. They're getting revelations of Jesus. They're having encounters with Jesus. Even terrorists, you know, Palestinian terrorists are being saved. And they're giving their testimony, you know. And I was saying to someone, can you imagine you know, a multitude of Muslims getting saved, what an army. They are trained to lay down their life. They don't care about their lives, you know, and they will do any and everything in service. If they've done it to Satan and they get the revelation of Jesus, what will they do? So we want to pray for them. We want to pray for a Muslim army to rise up. I'm just going to read one short thing that this Michael Schneider said about this um, eclipse. He said, let me start by going back almost seven years. So there were, on August 21st, 2017, the first great American eclipse made headlines all over the nation. It was also known as the Seven Salem Eclipse. So these things are not coincidence. You know, I mean, these things just don't happen. That the eclipse is going through eight cities of Nineveh. And the last one went through seven cities of Salem. He said, because the path of that eclipse crossed over seven U.S. locations named Salem. Salem is short for Jerusalem. And that is why so many early Americans chose that name for their communities. Now, the second great eclipse is almost here, and the path of that eclipse will cross over, as I said, seven locations named Nineveh. So we need to pray. We need to engage. It's time for war. Spring has sprung. Kings go to war in the spring. You know, we have so much to pray about. We have to protect our borders. We have to pray against terror in our cities, you know, in our nations, in America, in, in Canada. We have to pray to these sleeper cells to be exposed before they, uh, they do anything. We have to pray for the salvation of the Palestinians and the Muslim people. We have to pray that we will have the boldness and the courage and the chutzpah and every single thing that we need to stand right now and fulfill our assignments, you know, and our assignment is not just war. We have assignments to prosper, to prosper in the thing God has given us to, in our hands. What does he put in your hand? He's put something there for you to prosper in this time, to give you an income. So God is releasing ideas and wealth in this time. Everywhere I turn, he's talking about wealth. <laughs> Every, I go to a conference here, they're talking about wealth. I, you know, I, I stumble upon a video. It's talking about, you know, wealth because the wealth is transfer is here. You know, we've been talking about it for 20 years. Peter Wagner was talking about it before he died for like 20 years. I believe it's upon us. So God has a plan to prosper you in huge ways, not in little ways, not because, not only because he loves you, but also because he needs you to have finances to do what he's called you to do you have to have it nothing happens without finances so he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out some finances on your head get ready to receive it have the wisdom to know what to do with it what to do with it what is he calling you to do learn the different ways to handle it to to produce more wealth 
that that money will work for you instead of you working for it. So, um, you know, there's so much out there. Um, you know who um, is putting out a lot of amazing videos about this is Rick Pino. <laughs> if you guys know Rick Pino, he's an amazing, spontaneous, prophetic worship leader for like 20, 30 years. His worship in the in the 90s and in the early 2000s, you know, he got famous because angels he got, were recorded in his worship times. He has some amazing songs that you would recognize if you heard them. I mean, he's off the charts as a worship leader. He is into business now, making multi-million, hundreds of millions of dollars, and he's done it in a short time. And, and he has not, he's left God. He's radical for God, but God is taught. And I've met people just like that, radical for God, but God is telling them, showing them how to make millions of dollars and how to help other people in the body of Christ make millions of dollars in a very short space of time. And so he has, you know, like 20 videos, short videos and telling you exactly how to do it. He's willing to give it away. And um, so he's worth listening to if God, if God is leading you in that direction, because um, it takes a lot of finances. The, the, um, the enemy is well financed. <laughs> terrorism is well financed they have trillions and trillions of dollars to bribe to 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 do whatever they want to buy people kill people whatever they want to do they have the money they have the funds and what has god what has god's people been doing we've been fighting about the 10 percent tithe <laughs> you know it's like god save us you know God wants to bless you with so much money that uh, that you could just give him 90% easily and still have, you know, a million left over. That's what he wants to do. So, uh, you know, 90% goes to the kingdom and 10% to you, <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> so that's what he wants to do. He wants to bless you if you believe him and rise up into that place, that kind of faith to believe for anything and any possibility. So I want to just say, close with a, a word that, um, you know, I had published a while back. So it's just a portion of it. You know, um, it says, God said, be violent in your faith and take hold of your future. Press forward. Do not hold back. This is your time. And I'm saying to you, seize the moment. You are being positioned for a downpour of golden glory. Golden glory reign. I'm now offering my servants the gift of greater dimensions of my glory. As you engage in battle, so also first engage with me. Lock into my will for your life. Engage with my presence and lock on with intentionality in ways that you have not before. Engage and get locked into your assignment. Engage and seize the future. Do not let go. Get violent with your faith. The time has arrived for the armies of God to engage. Actively engage in the struggle to overcome the forces that seek to overwhelm with continual attacks and skirmishes. Live a life that is hostile to these forces. Become a place where their fiery darts cannot land. You are so covered in glory that darts cannot even touch you. They cannot even land. They just bounce off. Live a life. Take a stand of resistance to evil and you will encounter the angelic forces that are assisting you. Israel had to travel a path in the wilderness to learn how to fight as you have. Like they were, you are now ready to take your promised land. As I told Joshua, be strong and courageous. So I'm telling you, do not fear. For I'm with you to see you through to victory. And the shout of a king is with you. Amen and amen. So I just feel really stirred in, this, in my spirit. I just feel that the, the spirit realm is stirred up. And um, I don't know all that's going on. We need to be a people is sitting in his presence, be always alert to his voice. 
so that he can lead us and guide us in this time. He has so much to tell us, to lead, you know, to tell us about our lives, about our destiny, about our assignments, about the battle, you know. So we really need to, to, to just, you know, mark out, cut out a chunk of time just for him. Just, you know, just sit there. Just invite him and sit there and see what he says. You know, you may wait a little bit, but then you're going to hear something. You're going to hear a word, you know, write down that word. And then all of a sudden, the floodgates of heaven will open and he will speak. Hallelujah. So um, I feel we need to just, you know, we have been having some really anointed one in the morning uh, prayer times. You know, we, we, we are engaging. We've begun the, the fight, the warfare, um, Rhonda and myself. And uh, Martha, uh, with the women on the third Thursday, were leading these. And we uh, last Monday was really was really special. And I felt that we need to just maybe continue it into tonight and to to pray. So maybe okay, you know what? I do want to share something just on on the Nineveh message. Yeah. Um, you know, when you shared, like, you know, I'm not what I heard. What what I'm hearing in terms of that is um. And I was talking to someone about this earlier today is that I really do believe like never before we, the Lord is calling us out to go and speak, like to speak up in whatever our circle of influence is, you know, and to come out of our shyness or our hiding place or our politically correct um, perspective and so whether that's at the bus stop on our way to work or at the water cooler at work where you know everyone's an atheist or whatever that the lord is saying like right now i need you to open your mouth because right now i know it seems like you can't but you actually can and if you don't it may well be that we'll get to the place where we won't be able to and god forbid that that happened to us and to our land so i really feel that the lord is saying like you know even as um jonah like he tried not to go yeah he tried not to the lord just put him there anyway yeah so i think there's like there's that because the message had to be delivered and preached and i think he's he's saying that to us but also um i feel like he's saying also like don't be upset and don't be surprised when I do what I said I was going to do and forgive them and forgive them yes. and call them out of the kingdom of darkness and call them into the, right. into the kingdom of heaven. Exactly. You know? And so don't be offended by what I'm about to do when I do it. Yeah. Rejoice. You know, that's what we want. We want their salvation. And lately I've just been really sensing from the Lord, his heart for people even the most evil, he loves them. He loves them. All the mm -hmm. people that we're getting so angry at, you know, the prime ministers, the leaders, he loves them and he wants them saved. There will be a day when he says, well, time's up. I've given you time to repent. But, you know, until then, he, his heart is to save people. He is the savior. That's who he is. That's his name, savior. And he wants to save and we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for every prayer that has been prayed. We thank you, God, for everything that we know that you are right here, that you're hearing every single prayer and that you are with us and we are we are um, united with you in intercession and angels are, are at work and being dispatched to bring about the answers to these prayers. We believe that fully in Jesus' name. God, that all that we have prayed, that it matters, that it makes a difference. And we thank you that we're able to partner with heaven tonight, God. And we thank you for stirring us. And we thank you for, for the work you've done in our hearts all over these years, God. And the, pe the people that you have made us to be today, Holy Spirit, this is your work in us. And we say, you do marvelous work, Holy Spirit, and we so love you. We so love you, Holy Spirit. We love what you do in us. We love that you have brought us through. You're the lifter of our head. Lord, you teach us, you mentor us, you hold us when we cry and you, you lead us on on this journey and strengthen us. 
So we thank you. We we bless your holy name, Holy Spirit, and and we just so thank. We're so thankful. We're so thankful, Holy Spirit, and we want more of you, Holy Spirit, Lord. We want more. We're hungry for more. We want a greater infilling and a, a greater measure of you, Holy Spirit. As the Father said, or as Jesus said, if we ask you, Father, for a, for a stone, you won't give a rock or a serpent, but how much more will you give of the Holy Spirit? And Lord, we so need more of you in this hour, more of your power, more of your heart, more of your kindness, more of your strength. Lord, fill us without measure as Jesus was, filled without measure with the Holy Spirit and with power. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah and amen.